welcome back to my channel. Today is yet another day of plant miss. So I thought I would go through with you and show you sort of my ideal morning plant care routine. Things that I try and do most days. Try is the key word there. Um, but my sort of ideal morning plant care routine. Just to like how I start my day, make sure my plants are as happy as possible and do some like ongoing treatments. Cause as you all know, I've got a fungus net issue. So keeping on with that and just some updates in that sort of area as well. If you are new here and you don't know me already, my name is Emma and I make houseplanty content all over the internet. So if you want to follow along with my houseplanty journey and maybe learn something along the way, stick around, watch some more of my videos and subscribe to my channel. If you are not new here, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. And yeah. Uh, let's get into this plant mess morning routine vlog thing. <laughs> let's go. Let's 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 do something. So we saw at the beginning of this video, the sort of montage business was kind of how I like to start my day. I like to start it with a cup of tea and some toast, and I typically watch some sort of content, whether it's TikTok or. YouTube or whatever. This morning I was watching the end of Claire's Ikea cabinet video because I wanted to get the full tour. I know I was there building it with her, but like w she's definitely put more things in since I left. So I just wanted to see what she's put in there and how nice it's looking and I, I can't stop staring at it either. So if you haven't watched that video, go watch it um, over on her channel. But I've done that now. So let's get into like the actual planty sort of thing. Oh my god, the cabinet looks so chaotic from this angle. Um, so I'm actually going to start off in the cabinet. As you can see, this is my cabinet, the Millsbo, and it's been a minute since I've watered in here. So I'm going to give everything a good water with the mosquito bit water still, because as you can see, I mean, maybe you can't because it's not quite high enough. Like, I'll put a clip in, um, but the fungus gnat traps are proper filling up and it's not been that that long since I like put them up so I just want to continue keeping on with the mosquito bit water for as long as I can and hopefully that plus the traps plus the diatomaceous earth will kind of do their job. So that is everything in the cabinet watered. I really, really need to clean the cabinet because like the tide to vicious earth, it like sticks to the water and then falls out of the pot when I do a poor job of watering things nicely. So the whole bottom of this is a bit gross. But I have been using the mosquito bit water in the pond plants as well, just in case like I may as well use it in every reservoir. It's not going to harm them in any way. I should probably put fertilizer in it with it as well, but to be honest, it's fine. Um, exciting news though, my El Choco Red leaf came out. Um, Cleo, out of there. Cleo, out of there, please. Thank you. But look at that leaf. Is that gorgeous or what? It's like quite large as well, so I'm very excited about it. And the back has the very signature red in it, which is very exciting. But yeah, everything seems to be growing pretty well in here. Nothing that that exciting. Um, I mean, this isn't an updates video, but Cleo wants to hang out with us here. <laughs> um, 
but I also want to say that on my battling fungus gnats video when I was talking about my mosquito bit water a lot of people actually commented as well saying whether or asking whether or not the high temperature kills the bacteria of the BTI which is kind of one of the most important bits. The thing is I don't know the answer to that. I have done some google searching and honestly not been able to find any sort of information on it. There have been several blogs and whatever that have said do it with hot water and I've watched several videos saying that as well but then I've also I've never seen anyone say it will harm it. So uh, I'm gonna assume that it's fine. Um, but just in case I have stopped using the hot water, I'll opt for like a lukewarm water instead and try and leave the mosquito bit tea overnight to steep and that's worked better and because I'm not doing my whole collection at once anymore that's been fine five and a half liters is perfectly okay to water like bits and bobs of my collection without any sort of issue and then once that bottle runs out I'll refill it and then water more the next day which is more like my typical watering schedule anyway at the minute so I think long run that is the best way to be going about things just in case but I'm not sure if it matters and I've not seen anything saying that it does not work but it is a fair concern because bacteria can only last at certain temperatures and I don't know the exact temperature for BTI so if you want to be safe rather than sorry just do the tea and steep it overnight rather than doing hot water definitely don't do boiling water because I think boiling water would definitely kill the bacteria but like hot water out of the tap? Might not? I don't know. I don't know, but I've stopped. Um, just in case. And I'm just going to continue using it. And like I said, I'm using it in the semi-hydro as well, just in case. Like, what if the fungus gnats are using the water reservoirs to procreate? That's not the word. Recreate? To, to produce children. Um, so, yeah. I'm just taking it slow and continuing with that. I know this is going to be a process, the battle with the fungus gnats, and I'll get there in the end, but for now I need to just keep plodding along with it. And also I learned as well that the DE, once it dries out again and is no longer having the water absorbed, will start working again. So even if you have watered your plants with the DE on top, it doesn't stop completely. If you let the plant dry out all the way, the DE will like start shredding and absorbing the um, fungus gnats or pests again. So it is fine. I'm not reapplying every time just because it takes a lot of effort to do that, but I am trying to keep up with the mosquito bit tea and the sticky drops. So, it is what it is, hopefully, 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 maybe in the new year, my fungus gnat issue could be gone. I think I've definitely seen a reduction in them, because I've been catching a lot. But I mean, if there was a lot around, then they're producing a lot as well, so. It is what it is, we're just gonna keep on keeping on with that one. I still had some water left in my sprayer, so I went ahead and watered some plants that desperately needed it in my bedroom. So I finished that thing of water. So that's all I can water today, basically. I haven't watered things in here <laughs> since I posted that video, the battling fungus gnats one, so it's been a minute and a half. That's okay. Most of the plants in here are quite drought tolerant and because it's not been obviously as warm and they're not growing as much it should be fine I'm not like worried about any of them really but like I let things like the synapses up there in the bust pot to like I let it go till it's way curly which I probably shouldn't do but I do anyway so why not but now that that's out of the way I have a parcel um, a planty parcel as per usual um basically my subscription of 
predatory mites came in the mail and so it's time to replace all these sachets so i actually get these from i think it's ladybird plant care which i love i know i've used dragonfly before as well but now I've moved on to Ladybird because, and I really like this, they have a subscription system. So they'll automatically send me and bill me every six weeks for 10 more sachets. Like they'll get resent to me. So I don't need to worry about like, oh, when did I put that sachet on? Or like marking it in my calendar. I don't need to worry about that. It'll just automatically bill me and send me more, which I think is great and really useful for me. And I think you can set it up with different like predatory mites as well. These ones are the ones to go against thrips. And to be honest, I think it has made a difference. I haven't been seeing that many thrips in my collection recently. And I think that's quite lucky, knock on wood, that <laughs> that means these sachets are working because if I get like a small outbreak, then the predatory mites can like come in and like eat the eggs and larvae and stuff and I won't need to worry about them. So I'm gonna replace all of these now. Obviously this isn't something that happens every day. It happens once every six weeks, but I like to do it in the morning because it's just a further part of taking care of my plants and making sure that they are happy and healthy. actually just going to dust my plants. I don't do this every morning, but I really need to start because I was looking at some plants under the microscope the other day and um, they're dusty. And I, I mean, I can see it on them as well. So I may as well just get into the habit of doing it every day. So I actually got some microfiber gloves here, which Claire recommended off Amazon. Basically, you just put them on your hands and then you can go and like wipe the leaves and it gets all the dust off and i mean obviously this plant isn't ideal with it because it's got the extra floral nectaries but i'm basically gonna go through and give this room a dust and i'm like i think i think i'll do it similar to how i water and do a little bit every day and just treat a different room at a time so Let's check on some music and get dusting. gloves man they make it so easy to do the dusting it's like you can see they're definitely a bit dirtier um that's probably the best comparison um because i was mostly using my right hand and i think they worked so well it's quite easy for the small leaves because the annoying thing about small leaves is when you're using a cloth you've got to like get every single one and wipe it whereas this you can kind of just go over like this and get the top and the bottom of the leaves, which is great. And I'm pretty sure you could probably put like a neem oil spray or something on the gloves and then you'd be pest preventing as well. 
So, gloves man, I am I'm here for it. Thank you Claire for that advice. I've seen other people do it with cotton gloves, but I'm a microfiber gal because I like it better. And if you did notice, I didn't do any of the velvety leaf things. I'm going to get a makeup brush now and go over those just to make sure that everything is dust free because it's so important to do this over winter, especially, especially over winter because like the plants aren't getting as much light in general. Even if you have grow lights, it's not the same as the sun. And so if you're not like if you're not dusting your leaves, that's putting a protective coating over them from the sun, which you don't want. You want them to be getting as much light as possible over this time. If, if I mean, you don't have to, but they're going to be a lot healthier if you do dust them regularly. So I highly, I highly recommend uh, microfiber gloves. I can link the ones I have down in the description if that is something that you are interested in getting because you should be because they're great. And I also think that these will make it a lot easier to do this on a more daily basis. Like, dusting that, whereas it normally would have taken me like half an hour, took me like 10 minutes. So I feel like that's a very easy thing to add into my morning routine if it doesn't take very long. My last task before getting started with the rest of the day is making sure that I refill my big water sprayer because I am continuing with the mosquito bits and I want to keep doing the mosquito bit tea. And because I wanted to let it steep for like 24 hours, I need to refill it once I'm done using it so I can have some more to use the next day. I'm using lukewarm water here, like I said earlier, not hot, because I found that that works fine if you're just leaving it overnight. So that is it. That is my sort of morning routine currently, or my ideal morning routine. I really need to get into dusting more, but now that I have these gloves, man, it, I'm, I'm sure it'll happen. But yeah, that's kind of what I get up to on a typical morning and like the general plant care. I sometimes like check for things like my props if they need to be repot or anything like that. But I tend to do that when I know I have a little bit more time. I have a lot more that I need to do today. I've got to edit and film and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to get on with that and get on with the rest of my day. And I will see you tomorrow for another Plant Moves video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and leave a comment on other houseplanty things you'd like me to talk about in the future. If you want me to expand on anything in here or show you more morning routine kind of things, let me know and I can hopefully make that happen for you and subscribe for more. Thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Bye! <laughs>